Hello, this is Chemistry with Professor Lenis. Today, we are going to discuss about two very important properties of aqueous solutions. That means solutions that contains water as the main solvent. The objective is to distinguish between electrolytes and non-electrolytes using a simple circuit like this. And we are going to test two different solutions today. One solution that contains sugar, that's the regular table sugar, sucrose. We have the formula here, C12O22H11. We are going to dissolve the sugar into water. Also, here we have sodium chloride. We are going to make another solution containing sodium chloride, also in water. Since the purpose of the demonstration is to distinguish between, between uh, electrolytes and non-electrolytes, we are going to use distilled water here and tap water. I got this from the lab faucet. In general, we can say that an electrolyte is an aqueous solution that conducts electricity. A non-electrolyte is an aqueous solution that doesn't conduct electricity. Let's test the water first. Let me use the steam water here. And we are going to test it using this circuit. And let me explain you how the circuit works. This is a circuit that contains a light bulb. Normally, when, when you want to connect light bulb to the power supply, you use one of these plugs. Normally, this terminal goes to one of the terminals of the light bulb. And this other terminal goes to the second terminal of the light bulb. But in this case, we did a little modification that can be used to test electrolytes and non-electrolytes. What was the modification? Well, one of the terminals wires goes to the terminal of the light bulb. But the second terminal wire goes to this terminal. That creates an open circuit. <coughs> so I'm going to plug this into the power, 120 volts power supply. And as you can see, the light bulb is not lighting up. Why? Because we have an open circuit. I can close the circuit. If I connect this terminal that is connected to the power supply to this terminal, you will see what happened. And now we close the circuit. The circuit now is open. And the circuit now is closed. How do I close the circuit here? Because I'm putting a metal, I'm connecting the two terminals with a metal. Metals are good conductors of electricity. So we just need to close this circuit here to see the light coming up. All right. So let's test the steel water. The steel water, let's see what happens if that can close the circuit. 
we see nothing coming up here, no light. The circuit is still closed. So we can say that there's nothing in the water that facilitates the flow of electrons from one terminal to the other terminal. Let's say we are going to use Tabora. What happened with the Tabora? <coughs> As you can see, there's a very dim light over here. That we can conclude that there's something in that Tabora that helps the flow of electrons between the two terminals. And we are going to discuss later about that. So, since our distilled water sample is telling us that there's nothing there that conducts electricity between the two terminals, we are going to use that steel water. I have here also the steel water. What I'm going to do is to rinse the two terminals to make sure our test will not show false positives. I'm going to unplug this first. To wipe out the two terminals. All right. And let's test again to make sure the system is working. Okay, it's working. Next. My first solution will be the one that contains uh, sugar. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar into this beaker. I think that's enough. And we're going to dissolve that sugar with distilled water. dissolve some of the sugar into the water. As you can see, about half of the solid sugar is already dissolved in the water. That should be enough to do the test. More sugar has been dissolved into the water. Now let's test if there's any conductivity through that solution. We see nothing here, no light is coming up, so that means the sugar molecules are not helping on that flow of electrons between the two terminals. In this case, we call this solution, let me add more water to make a real solution. Everything has to be dissolved in order to have a homogeneous mixture. So, no faces, no solid face in the solution. Now I have a completely dissolved the sugar into the water. Let's test again. Nothing. 
So we can conclude that the solution of sugar, the aqueous solution of sugar, does not conduct electricity. Therefore, we can say that this solution is a non-electrolyte. In general, molecular compounds will not make electrolytes. They will make non-electrolytes. Let's test, let's do the same thing with sodium chloride. The formula of sodium chloride is NaCl. And I'm going to add some of the salt, as you can see, they are white crystals. Let's dissolve some of this into the put some on the beaker. It should be enough for our experiment. Now let's dissolve the salt into the steep water. So it's actually the water that dissolves the compound. These two compounds, the sugar and the sodium chloride, are very soluble in water. And if you can remember, the sugar is a molecular compound because there is a covalent bond between these atoms that forms the molecule. Whereas in sodium chloride, we call it ionic compound because there is an electrostatic force bonding together these two uh, ions. That's, the, and that's what we call it ionic compound. And dissolving the sodium chloride into the water. All right, most of it have dissolved into the water. Now let's test. But first, we need to rinse our device first. Okay. I'm going to whip it out. I'm going to plug it back. Test it. It's working. Now let's test our second solution. Remember this solution is a solution we made with sodium chloride and still water. Ah, look at that. Right away. Very bright light. That means the solution somehow is closing the circuit. In other words, that solution helps the flow of electrons between these two terminals. And the light comes up. This is an example of an electrolyte. So what is an electrolyte? An electrolyte is an aqueous solution that conducts electricity, as you can see here. It conducts electricity. Why? The reason and the explanation is in the structure of this formula. Here we have a molecular compound and here we have a ionic compound. What is an ionic compound? Is ionic compounds are substances, pure substances, that are made of ions. In this case, we're talking about sodium plus ion that makes it a cation 
and Cl minus ion, which is the chloride ion that makes, since it has a negative charge, that makes it as an anion. So there's an electrostatic force between these two ions because they have different charges to produce a stable neutral ionic compound.